eight to 10 years old, right here, free bus rides. Then this Saturday we have gaming party. Woo! Show them the hoodies, show them the hoodies. Shoot, here's the hoodies. 16 player Call of Duty system link, tons of fun, door prizes, tournaments with prizes, all the prizes, it is a great time. Room full of video games, this is the largest gaming party around, and that is this Saturday. 6.30 to 9 p.m., ages 9 to 18, free, and free bus rides for that. Also, then Sunday. Oh. Sunday, fun day, we start out 10.30 a.m. with Continental Breakfast, and then Sunday Church at 11 a.m., and Kids Church, free bus rides for that, too. Yes. So it's going to be a very fun, filled week. Very fun, yes. So no Bible study Friday because of gaming party. Right. But that's the rundown. Anything else you want to announce or put in there? Um, well, Christmas Eve day, we're having our Christmas Mystery Theater. <gasps> yeah, so this will be really fun. And so next week, it's a Sunday, and so next Tuesday you'll be able to see. Maybe we should do a walkthrough. <gasps> Ooh! So this whole place will be Israel. So the Sunday one is a week from Sunday. We have it, right? And the Wednesday one is a week from Wednesday. A yes. week from tomorrow. The 20th yep. is the Kids Mystery Theater, and I the 24th is oh, the... I put the wrong date. Everybody. So they're very fun. fun. Yeah. Yeah, we just put a little promo video for the kids one out today, so you can see that. That's very fun. Kind of gives a little walk around. Well, we are going to dive into the road to sweatless success. Yes. Whoa. You know, I don't like sweat. Yeah. I like sweatless success. Praise God. Everybody's hey, on there. Hey, Connie. Connie and Jasper. Ow. The koozies. So let's go cool. to koozies. Yeah. Let's go to Proverbs 10. We're going to start in Proverbs 10 and verse 22. So many of the success stories in the Bible, like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they were exceedingly wealthy, like over the top, yeah. like too much. Yeah. Then you go to Solomon. Solomon was over the top yeah. wealthy. Now, success doesn't just mean earthly possessions. There's more to it than that, but it also includes that. And there is more to success than just wealth. It includes other life transforming blessings, like it's going to transform your life, like joy unspeakable, long life, uh, and all around blessedness. Those are all included in success. And the Bible makes it very clear that the God kind of success is enjoyed just like in Proverbs 10 and verse 22. The blessing of the Lord, it makes truly rich, and he adds no sorrow with it, neither does toiling increase it. So it doesn't have like a pill bottle, and on the back, these are the side effects. <laughs> it's gonna cause this and this problem. If it's, if it's really the blessing from the Lord, there's no ill side effects That's right. with it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's a good telltale. Okay, you know what, this blessing had a little bit of man mixed in there. There was some but God's blessing, there's no ill effects, no side effects. It's all good. Yeah. And you can tell good. if you're struggling, it's not God. Because no. it says, yeah. he adds no sorrow, or That's you right. can say toiling, or yeah. struggle with it. Right. Yeah. None yeah, of that's that. God's will. Yeah. yeah. Praise God. That's the God kind of success. Praise God. Yeah. And God is the king of success. And that success is only available and only attainable with God in the kingdom of God. So we're going to look at what is success, because you got to know what it is. Because if you don't know what it is, you don't know what you're looking for, and then you won't be able to identify it when you do find it. It's kind of like, have you ever told somebody, oh yeah, I'm trying to find this. It's, it's this one piece of clothing in a whole closet. You're like, is it this? Is it this? Is it this? got to give them a description. Yeah. It's this and it has this on it with fur collar and all that stuff. Oh, is it this? Yes. So you got to know what it is. Yeah. And it's one thing to know what you want. It's another thing entirely to know what it looks like. That's good. Yeah. Because we can always have all these plans in life. Oh yeah, I know what I want in life. But then when it really comes along, you're like, wow, I never knew that I wanted that, but I like it. I remember Keith Moore told a story 
that they were searching for a new house. They were believing God for one. Keith Moore had this whole list of what he wanted his house to look like. So God told him, go look at this house over there. So he went there and he's like, this? This isn't anything that I thought it was going to be like. But God said, that's the one. So he's like, okay. So he got the house and he never knew all the things in that house that he liked it so much. He said the longer he lived in it, the better he liked it. Yeah. And he said the Lord, Lord knew that. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So God will do that. So sometimes we need to leave open spaces for yeah. God to fill those. Yeah. yeah. Because when we do that, we let God fill in because he knows what we like. And he knows maybe you like this because it's a little bit different, but yeah. you're going to like it. Well, that's like just our, our church bus broke down. We didn't know what was wrong. So we called one place, a dealer. They couldn't get us in for weeks. Then we called another place, mechanic, couldn't get us in for weeks. And so we thought, is this a really bad thing that we can't get into these two places? But actually, it was better. Then we mm -hmm. went to a neighbor. He knew exactly what it was. And I mean, you can look at things. Yeah. We, you, so we prayed, mm -hmm. oh, Father, we just pray that we get into this dealer. No, just pray it's fixed. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just pray that it's fixed and God's got the plan. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes you just pray the end goal and let God fill in all the steps to that. If we would have yeah. went to that dealer, it would have been hundreds of dollars. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of dollars. Toil, when you add toil to it, yeah. it means there's no peace to it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's no peace, then, there's, then God can't help you. Yeah. yeah. I've heard it said yeah. this way, minister, you know, praying. And he said, Lord, it seems like you're not hooking up with me right. in this thing that I'm praying about. What, what's the, and the Lord told him, that's, that's not why I will for you to pray. That, you leave that alone. Mm -hmm. you know? And sometimes we could be living life and you go, Lord, it just doesn't seem like we're, you know, what's <laughs> yeah. going on? What's going on? And you might be over in an area that you wanted to do or that you got ahead of God. Yeah. God's not in it. Right. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And if there's struggle, yeah. it's not God. That's not God. I've done it many times where I'm trying to do this thing and it's just hard and I'm just it's just not working and then when I'm finally like you know what forget it all oh, this peace comes yep. you're like oh, yep. yeah I was trying to make this or happen. you ever yeah. have this where you're just you know you're trying you have a list of things to do or you have of something coming up or it just seems like everything's stacking up on you and you just get stressful I you know I've seen and I look back hindsight's hindsight's better than foresight <laughs> and a lot of times you let go of one of those things that yeah. God wasn't in. Yeah. Smooth smith. Now you might you still gotta work and you still gotta do things and do your part, yep. but the stress is gone. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Peace. Yeah. There's your peace. Right. Yep. Now there the translations here is it okay if I read yeah. it? The NIV says no painful toil. Mm -hmm. The message says life rich. Ooh. The Amplified says true riches. And the WLT is no grief. Ooh. That's, so good. That's amazing because you know, money can be the most grievous thing. Yeah. The yeah. hardest thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you have it and you don't have it. Yeah. I mean, people yeah. have, yeah. Yeah. Money amplifies what you have. So this is, we're going to look at the success package, but the failure package includes this is what you get with the failure package fear, disappointments, depression, yeah. guilt hesitation, mm. shrinking back, Man. holding back. Have you ever done it where you're like trying to save something just so that it doesn't get used yeah. or that you're not yes. using your full talent because yeah. I got to hold back a little bit. That's yeah. in the failure package. I used to I used to drive my truck and I would listen for bad noises. Mm. You ever do that? You're driving a vehicle <laughs> and you're just waiting because you want to catch that first bad noise of when that vehicle's going bad. So you can stop it yourself. Yeah. That is such a wrong mentality. Yeah. Yep. You know what you do? I, I remember Kenneth Hagin said that he would have these alarming when he was on the bed of sickness. And it man, he would hold on to his bedpost yeah. with everything, just oh, trying man. to stay alive. Because the doctor told him you have to die. And he'd have these heart attacks and these heart these spells come on. And he said one because the Lord was dealing with him, you need to let go of that worry. He was so programmed to worry. Yep. And he, wow. he had grabbed those until the perspiration from his hand is just holding that, wore off all the varnish on those bedposts. Wow. He said one day, he was having one of those, you know, and he, 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 he received the Lord and he was saved. He knew where he was going. Mm -hmm. So you know what? He said, let her go. I'm not afraid. Every one of those symptoms left. Yep. Woo. Yeah. Yep. 
You know, right, sometimes stop. we're holding on to that situation. Yep. Man, I don't want this vehicle to go yes. off. You know, yep. in 10 years, you're probably not gonna have that vehicle or yep. even the next one. Yeah. You know, the whole temptation could be just fear. Yep. Are they, can I get them in fear? Can I get them, because you're not in faith and fear. You know what, right. too? So many people are holding on to their money. Yep. Just hold on. I yeah. gotta just so it doesn't run out. I just hold on. Roll it over on the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Roll the care of that over on God. And it says to do that once and for all. Yeah. And being generous does that. Yeah. When you're a tither, it does that. It puts money in its rightful place yeah. that yeah. you don't get to tell me if I'm gonna give or not. Right. I'm gonna listen to God and give or not. That's yeah. good. Yeah. And sometimes to break that, if that's a stronghold over your life, God would be like, you know what? Give it all. Yeah. And you're like, whoa. But it'll break that. Yeah. Well, and think about this. We start out in that failure package. Yep. And that's the world's package. Well, you're in that fail. Everybody's gr grown up. Everybody around them has a bit of that failure package just looming over there. They, don't, they can't get out of that. It's a down, downward uh, spiral that can't be stopped. But to transfer over can be a tricky thing. Yep. It's like riding a bike. Mm -hmm. Everybody remember when they learned to ride a bike? It's just like, how do you stay up? How do you stay up? And one day it clicks because you stay with it. And I believe that this message, the Lord's telling you, you need to stay with that faith. Yes. You got to stay trusting in the Lord because it'll click. Yep. It You'll will. walk by it faith. Will. You'll mm -hmm. switch sources. Yep. You just <clears throat> stick with it. Just go. It's a process. It's a learning thing. Give yourself grace and just go with it. Yeah. So ultimately the <laughs> failure package leads to death and an unfulfilled calling of God. I don't want that. I don't want to get to heaven and be like, well, I held back a little. I didn't use everything you gave me. I want to get there out of breath, used up everything to the fullness of its capacity, just all of it, and be yeah. like, okay, there was nothing else. I used it all. Yeah. Everyone is searching for success, yeah. but most people don't know, they don't know what it looks like. So then you could just see people searching for all the wrong outcomes. They're searching for all the wrong goals. They're trying to get success on their own. They're trying to get money. They're trying to get fitness. You see these people just bulking up. They're trying to have all the friends, all the fame. It could be anything. It could be, I'm trying to get 500 Facebook friends and then I'll be a success. Or I'm going to have this group of people, then I'll be a success. Or I'm going to get married, then I'll be a success. Or I'm going to have 500 kids and they're going to be the best kids ever, That's then I'll be a success. That's a lot of kids. <laughs> Number one success is not possessions or position. It's not. Success is not possessions or position. So trying to be like number one in life, that is not success. Mm -hmm. Trying to have all the stuff, that's not success. Mm -hmm. True success is defined as the accomplishment of an assignment or the attainment of a desired end. So when you get that goal, when you do that thing, when you accomplish that assignment God has given you, it doesn't mean you don't have more, yeah. but you've accomplished that. It's the end product of discovery or the product of purpose. You got to have those. Success is also the capacity to make distinction out of vision. Have I not been able to, I did it one time where you have those pictures and it's like fuzzy, but if you like relax your eyes or cross your eyes or whatever, you can see it. I can't do those. I don't know why. It just doesn't work. You get the images to align and then you can see some 3D image. I you did it one time. I did it one time. I think I jumped around the room. I was so excited. <laughs> but success gives you the to ability to see it. And you know, once you see it, it's hard to unsee. Yeah, you That's can't true. You've got That's it now. True. That's true. That's good. So you might have a vision, but success is the ability to see the details and to mm. fine tune that, that vision yeah. to get the steps to take you to that end goal. Yeah. And that's so good because that's what the Word of God does. You know, we give all these examples with, with Lillian Yeomans and that lady, and she kept telling her to just quote that script. She said, it doesn't mean anything to me. But once she could see it. Yes. And, you know, you then stick you with the Word because once you, it dawns on your spirit what it really means, you'll have it made. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Once you see it, you can't unsee it yep. in the word. <laughs> it's kind of like we've set up the big screen here, and then Kelly will be doing the projector, and I'll be like, a little bit more, a little bit more. Oh, there it is. There it is. And you're like, you can tell exactly when it's the clearest. Yeah. You're like, ah, that's crisp. 
<laughs> True success is not an overnight game. It's not, it's not that get rich quick, just like real muscle. If you're gonna go to the gym and you wanna bulk up and be Arnold Schwarzenegger or whoever. Or uh, inflate. Yeah. See those guys, oh that's so ridiculous, they have those. <laughs> It's like Botox for your biceps. Oh my god. Ridiculous. That's oh ridiculous. Not real. Look like it got a crazy injury or something. I don't know. No, and that's not even real. But going to the gym once or twice or even for a week or even for a month, it takes real time. I've heard it said that it can take like to get real gain in the gym or whatever, it can take up to two years. And you might be thinking, what? Come on, it should be like a month. No. It's when you're in it for the long haul yep. that you don't care how long it takes. It takes real time. Success is an unending and tireless time investment. Isn't it funny how you can be doing something that you have dreamt of doing mm -hmm. and not appreciate it? Yep. Mm -hmm. And think, oh. And even maybe trying to get out of it or trying to get something different. Yeah. And then, like, tell about when you did that with your job. Your dream job. She talked about this since she could talk. <laughs> She wanted to work at Trump Drug. Yeah, and so then I get it, and all I want to do is get out of it. <laughs> no. I want to. Funny? I measured my success at making my books and business enough that I could live on, and it wasn't happening, and I was struggling, and I was. Ugh. And one time, God gave me a word that said, "I have a surprise for you," and I'm like. This is it. <laughs> so I wrote out all this stuff in this notebook and I like all the stuff that I need to live on and all these lists and all these dreams. And I'm like, this is it, Lord. And then he had me look up some verses on when you get a word from the Lord. And it was you sometimes it's could be five, ten years down the road. I'm like, what? It's not going to be tomorrow? Because I was like, okay, what should I say to my job when I give my notice? You know, like, and then I, it led to, like, some amazing teaching from some other ministers. And, yeah, no, that's not what the surprise was. And I was, like, getting all worked up. Like, I couldn't fall asleep that night because I was like, okay, what am I going to say? And how is this going to work? And pretty soon I'm like, what am I doing? And I was like, okay, let's just get back here and I still have that notebook and I wrote a lot of stuff down that the Lord told me and it brought peace. Yes. Wherever what did he tell you? What did he tell you? What were you supposed, what was the truth? That you what really part? like your job. Oh yeah. So then I hit my 18th year anniversary of my job and I was thinking, I was thinking of all the things that I liked about it and all of a sudden the Lord, the Lord was like, hello. There you hear is. you have your dream job. You work your dream hours and you want to get out of it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And I thought, wait a second. He's like, what are the, I thought of all the things I liked about it. Mm -hmm. I like everything about it. Mm -hmm. What am I doing? And then it changed your heart. Now she looks forward to going to it. Yeah. Now yeah. it's not a chore. Yeah. It's not a job. It's, you know, and doors have opened for ministry while she's at work. Mm -hmm. yeah. More than ever. Yeah. More than ever. And see what the devil does? He brings discontent, then yeah. distraction yeah. to get you up. What if she would have quit and then she realized that? Yeah. Ooh. You That's don't right. always yeah. get to go back. And look mm -hmm. how many years it took. Yeah. yeah. And see? we always confuse the word content. We correlate that. We put that together with satisfied. Content does not mean satisfied. So you can, ha you can be content and still want more because content means undisturbed and unmoved wow. so you can be in that situation yes you like your job you like you are right now but you're still going for the goal of more you're that still word, going yeah. for the goal of what this is what's next but I'm undisturbed in this state that I'm in because that word content you're referring to when Paul said I've learned he had to learn this he had to develop this yeah I've learned in whatever state or situation I am in to be content mm -hmm. and that also means um, um, oh, what's the word? Um, independent of circumstances. Yep. Completely yep. independent. You have to learn to do that. And you Undisturbed. Know, even after I thought, oh, wow, I really like my job. And I was set yeah. free from that stupid lie. The devil tried other things where, yeah, you might like your job, but not when it's crazy busy. Because everybody <laughs> around you, you know, oh, it's so busy. And then yeah. I thought, no, I yeah. like, I actually like it when it's busy. It's fun. Mm -hmm. And so just... Every lie that he tries to put on you, you can kill. 
Yep. Yeah. And be undisturbed. God never brings discontent. Nope. Never. Because then you lose your peace. When you lose your peace, you're not in faith. And then yeah. you make stupid decisions. Yeah. Yeah. And it's usually based on flesh. Mm -hmm. What you see right now, this moment, like a toddler, like a, you know, like a baby Christian. And man, and he wants you to jump on that right now and get then your feelings get in there, your emotions get in. And now your whole focus is, I got to change this. I got to change this now. I got to do it right away or else. Yeah. And you can see that in toddlers. They're disturbed a lot in life. <gasps> oh, I'm tired. Oh, I'm hot. Oh, I'm cold. Oh, I'm hungry. Oh, I'm bored. Oh, you touched my toy that I wasn't even looking at until you touched it. And then it's just everything. Oh, that's undisturbed. Yeah, everything. Or that is disturbed. But we can live like an adult, mature, undisturbed. But we can live come. In, We can live in peace. Yes. And we can live in confidence, in assurance. That is huge. Knowing that God's yeah. going to come through. It's going to turn out okay. Think and about, you're not yeah. going to hear from the Lord in that place nope. of discontent. Right. And, you know, be it, you're not going to hear from him. No. Well, how so about that picture? How about that picture of Jesus walking on the water during a storm? He was in some kind of peace. You know, the Bible calls him the Prince of Peace. Yep. And that's a picture of walking in peace. But that's not just him. That's us. Yep. Yes. We can walk on top of circumstances, in the middle of circumstances. Yep. Jesus was completely undisturbed yeah. and independent of, the, of those circumstances. Yep. yep. Man, that's good for us. Well, yeah. and take it further. I mean, look at, uh, we know Paul, he lists a few times all the stuff he went through. Woo. And he says, but the Lord delivered me from them all. Then in James it says, count it all joy when you go through tribulations. Yeah, and you're yeah. like, what? And then it says the trying of your faith is more precious than gold. So we've got to look at this the way God does. Yeah. And when we stay in peace and we stay, you know what? We're laying our flesh aside. We're going, no, 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 no. You do not dictate what I'm focused on, what I'm thinking, yeah. what my emotions are, what my feelings are. No, my spirit does. Yes. And my spirit is hooked up with That's God. Right. Yes. And it's going to think and act and feel exactly like he does. Yep. This, That's yep. huge. And in this culture, if it's hard, you better run. You've got to yeah. quit if it's hard, if it's long. But it says right after count it all joy, it says let patience have Woo! its perfect work. Yep. And it's in other translations, it's like don't run away. Don't take the shortcut out of this. Yeah. We wanted to let it work for us. Yeah. When you're looking at just the instant, just the right now, you are going to be disturbed a lot. You're going to be like this. But when you're looking at the long haul, when you're looking at that end goal way out in the distance, it's going to be smooth. Yeah. You're not going to be moved by all those little things. They say when you're investing money, it's a long haul. It's a long time investment. You don't want that quick thing because you're going to be like this. But when it's that long distance, when that does go down, when the stocks go down or whatever, you don't be disturbed. You just stick with it. They'll come back up and you just watch that because it's like this. It's messy. You think, you think life is just this. It's not. It's this. Yeah. But there is progress upwards. So you got to be looking at the long haul for it. At the long, yeah. And look at God. Yeah. He looks at time completely different than us. That's why it says yeah. to have patience. And that's why it says to always look up. Yes. It doesn't yes. mean look up. It means keep your eyes that's on good. heaven. Keep your yeah. eyes on the kingdom. Keep your eyes on, on the goal at the end. I'm, yeah. We've mentioned this family, and I, it, you know, this family, big family, and the grandma and grandpa. Some of the kids, they'd have a family get together, and some of the kids, you know, grown up kids would come to the grandma yeah. and grandpa, and they had these problems. And the grandma and grandpa said they would say this. They say we have developed and uh, worked on rolling our cares on the Lord. And they would say wow. this, when they would bring those problems, they say, oh, that's such a small thing with God. Wow. That's such a, and these were big problems. Yeah. That's such a small thing with God. And they said, you just, you gotta roll that over on God. Praise you gotta God. roll that, you gotta learn to cast your cares over on Him. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And that's, be undisturbed. That's probably what I love most about getting more mature in the Lord is, even like as a teenager, I was a Christian as a teenager, but everything was the end of the world, a big deal. Yeah. And when you get more mature in the Lord, you're just, you hear something, you know, scary or bad, you're just, okay. Eh. 
God, God has been faithful every single time. He's just going to show himself faithful. That's again. good. Yeah. Yep. That's exactly right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And if you stick and with And that's them, a choice. Yeah. Yeah. It's a choice that we make. It's not yes. a feeling. Nope. It's not an emotion. It's yep. not something out of control. It's a choice that we make. I heard a story yeah. about a minister, and he was a really young minister, and he got in a bigger church. Well, they found out later it was a troubled church. Mm. And that burden of the church started getting on him. Oh. He found, I mean, he, you know, he knew not to worry, but he, he found himself once in the parking lot. He said, how did I get here? And here he was so overcome with worry that he'd come to that place because he saw this church and, I mean, he'd try to get evangelists or speakers to come and nobody would go to that church because they knew about that church. Man. It had never supported a pastor before and churches half and, and way smaller than this church had supported pastors. This one never did. He said, they said that, uh, and this was years and years ago, but they'd have an a evangelist come and he'd come for two weeks and get a dime. I mean, there were problems in that they were divided. That's a problem. And in this minister, in this minister who took that church, he said, "Lord, you know," and he, it got, got on him. This is what what the worry was. Lord, something ought to be done, but I don't know what to do. Something ought to be said, but I don't know what to say. Mm. And the Lord told him, "You need to roll the care over him." Yes. And he yep. said, "You know, it's like that song: cast your burden, bring your burden to the Lord, and leave it there." Yeah. And he said it was like sticky paper. You know those little fly sticky yeah. things. Yeah. He said, "Man, he well, lay it, he give it to God." He'd have, to, he'd have to get rid of that thing. Yeah. But he said once he did, and it took time. Once he did, he said it was like magic. Yeah. He said wow. it turned around. That church, I mean, it, it, it turned around. And it got so good that in looking back, he said it, it got so good he thought something must be wrong. <laughs> he said that's what happens in life when you roll your burden on the Lord. Yep. When you roll your can, it just turns around. Yep. You get God involved. Stop worrying about that problem. Wow, that's so stop, good. Stop trying to hold on to that thing to make it work. You can't do it anyways. Nope. Roll it over yep. on him. And we do like that filing cabinet in our minds, and we look through, where's the answer? And you look through, and you dump them all out, and you're searching, where's the answer? It's not in your mind. Yeah. It's in God. Yeah. Roll it over on him. Yes. Well, and that's what this verse says, the blessing of the Lord, it yeah. maketh rich. It's the blessing that does it. It's not even our own wow, you're so amazing. No, it. It's yeah. the blessing that does it. Yeah. And then when things happen, you just go, it's not me. It's the blessing of the Lord. It's God who does it. Yeah. So when things happen, you just say, thank you, Lord. You, you're the one who does it. It's not even my problem. It's your problem. And lean not on your own understanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People always want to try to understand why it's happening. <laughs> it doesn't even matter because sometimes it's the most stupidest thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and trust, yeah. true trust is, I don't have to understand it. Right. I don't have to know. Right. I just trust. I That's trust good. you. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So success requires a process, mm -hmm. and it produces in stages. It's here and there. It's not, we're going to do this 10-year thing, and then at the very end, there's going to be the payout. No, it's a process and produces in stages. It's steps of faith, not leaps of faith. There's nowhere where it says, leap of faith. It's steps with God, which is really nice. Yeah. Because like you said, you don't have to know how, you don't have to know why. You might get to know later, right. but it doesn't matter if you trust God. Mm -hmm. And success is not just a destination, it's an adventure. Yeah. It's a journey. Yeah. It's not arriving at the peak overnight. It's making continuous mm -hmm. progress. So when every day is a plus on the previous day, you can be termed successful. That's right. Yeah. If it's a plus from yesterday, that's a success. success. That's really hard to say. Success. So real lasting success is not a get rich quick scheme. If it's quick to get it, it's quick to lose it. Just like those who win the lottery with their life. If you look statistically yeah. at people who've won the lottery, it's not good. The ones who won, that money, it disappears and it goes down quickly. Are you going to read a bunch of those scriptures in the Proverbs about get rich quick? There are so many warnings that God gave us in the book of Proverbs about getting rich quick. Yep, and yep. It's a, and you know what? There are instances where getting healed quick resulted in losing that healing. 
Yeah, because mm. you don't know how to keep they it. They got that as a manifestation of the spirit. They didn't know how they got it. And so when the devil came and talked them out, they weren't established on the word. Sooner or later, we need to become established on the word in every area to keep the devil out. Yep, yep, yep. And you can even see that in those who have built wealth, even like millionaires just in the world. I've heard it even said that they said that if they even lost all their millions of dollars, that it would be easy to build it back up again because they knew how they did it. Mm. And they even say with just gaining muscle, I think of it this way because getting fit and gaining muscle and stuff, there's no cheap payout for that. You have to put in the work to do it. So it's a long, hard process to gain real muscle. But if something happens and you can't go to the gym for a month or so or a while and you lose muscle, because of muscle memory, it's quicker and easier to gain that muscle back mm -hmm. than wow. the original gaining of it. That's wow. And you can even see that with people believing in faith that who was it that they said that their first dollar believing God for that yeah. was the hardest thing. Yep. But now believing God's for millions, that's just easy. It yeah. just comes like this, just quick, just yeah. easy. Well, that's how it was with our bus. The first bus, it took years. Yeah. And it was, uh, it was so much money for us. Yeah. And then the second one was easier, and the third one was just a couple months. Yeah. 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 Easy, easy. If once you get that going, because we learned, oh, this is what it's like. Kind of like riding a bike. You can yeah. try to explain to a kid how to ride a bike, but until they really do it yeah. and get the feel of it, then they're like, that's what you were talking about. Tell yeah. us that word that Jerry Seville gave for 2024 again. It oh, fits here pretty good. Yeah, yeah, the word of the Lord for 2024 was, um, it's imperative that you stay in faith. Don't be disturbed by the world and things that are going on around it. Oh boy, that's good. Yeah, yeah, don't be that's disturbed timely. by that. That's timely. And if you do that, You'll see progression, advancement, and your highest expectations being fulfilled. Wow. wow. I have that on my treadmill, and I look at that every day, that's and I say, that's awesome. me. That's mine. Henry, hey, wow. can you do Mark eleven twenty two in the Amplified? It has that it's exactly with that that's word. That's awesome. That's oh, awesome. Mark. And he was talking about Timothy, that Peter was writing. Paul was writing to Timothy, and he said that people will see your progress they'll mm. see it look at that first yeah. line of verse 22 mark 11 22 and jesus replying said to them have faith in god constantly constantly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. jesus said if you continue in my word then are you my disciples indeed yep all the time all the time all the time i have a goofy example this will this will stick in your minds a little bit <laughs> uh there was a cartoon and in this cartoon there was this bodybuilder famous and he had these dumbbells and he said I'm gonna sell one of these dumbbells and this main character in this cartoon said oh, okay so he takes a dumbbell and just all the time everywhere he goes he's just pumping that and he goes to this restaurant and all the guys that he's friends with hey whoa look at you yeah it's working good now I'm gonna do the other and they go no no you're gonna no we have a plan so they kept that he was only doing the one arm he's starting getting big he just took it everywhere he went all the time he's just <laughs> just goofy just goofy. And they said, no, this is what we're going to do. When people come into this restaurant, you're going to keep that arm back there. And they go, hey, you get them mad, and they say, I'll arm wrestle you. And then you pull that out, and you win their money. Oh! You know, a lot of believers, if they'll stay in the word. There you go. Yes. And the devil oh. comes, you go, oh. You take your hands on the devil goes, yeah. You take that word of God. <laughs> Boom. I've been waiting for you. You've been waiting for that. Yeah. Constantly. Praise Continue God. in his word. You know what that looks like? It looks like when David ran towards Goliath. Yeah. Yep. He didn't just stand there just waiting, and then when Goliath gets good, he runs backwards, and he's running. You're not ready then. You know what he did not do? What? He didn't wake up that morning when he met Goliath and go, Wow, I just read I have a covenant with God. Huh, I'm going to go try this out. <laughs> he built it. He built yes. a experience over time, yeah. covenant with God. That yeah. wasn't the his lion, first rodeo. The bear. How did he do the first one, the lion? Wow. You know, David, those psalms were written when he was with the sheep. Yeah. He fellowship with God. Yeah. He spent time with God. He saw in the he, he knew his covenant with God. Mm -hmm. And when that lion comes, this is what David said. God's with me. <laughs> Usually you run. He said, no, God's with me. He took that lion out. Yeah. He said, wow, isn't that something? Then when the bear came, guess what he did? God help me with the lion. 
The same God that I'm in covenant with. Take that bear out. It was the easiest thing in the world. Yeah. Do that with Goliath. You know, when Samuel came, the high priest at that time, he came to David's house to anoint the next king of Israel. And so he started with the oldest boy, because that's yeah. how it's supposed to go, the oldest one. He went down, down, down. There wasn't anybody else. The Lord kept saying, nope, nope, nope. So he goes, is there anybody else? You know? Yeah. They said, well, our, our little brother's out with the sheep. And, and so Samuel said, we're not doing anything else till you go get him. And then he comes in. So this was not a prestigious, prestigious job. Yeah. And look at, he used it to benefit That's his walk so with God. That's wow. so good. He used it to get yep. strong. It doesn't matter the place that you're in right. Use it. Yeah. Yes. Use yeah. it. Yeah. Use so it good. to get stronger in the Lord. That's Why? So good. For the yes. next one. That's so For good. For the next place. Yeah. But if you'll notice, it can be kind of confusing because yeah. when he won that and he had Goliath's head in his hand and he, you know, he didn't become king right then. No. That's right. No. Mm -hmm. He waited. It was a long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He waited. And, and really, I mean, he went through some really bad things, just like Joseph. Just like they, I mean, if you see life, that's how it is. Why? Because you're learning. That's so you're good. being yep. humbled and proved. Humbled right. and proved. Yeah. Found faithful. Found faithful. Yeah. Found faithful. We're going to put you in a situation here. It's just like the military. They're going to keep yeah. putting in you in situations wow. so that when you get in that situation, you don't even have to think. That's so you good. Just, yes. You just respond. Yep. Yep. Well, that's exactly what Kelly was talking about with that job. Yeah. Trying to get discontent out of there, but God's using that. You know, somebody said, we used, we've had people say, well, how can you have a job and serve God? You do it by faith. Yeah. Hello. Yep. <laughs> you know, when I started doing lawns, I had people that we, we acquainted, and they'd say, oh, that's just good enough for you. Or, you know, just more or less implied that. You know that I've gotten more of the word of God mowing lawns? That's not that mm. fancy of a job. That's not some big qualified, you get a four-year degree, and everybody's like, oh, someday, you know, if I could be that. No, but I, I get the word of God doing it. And I use it to the glory to God. And I walk by faith in it. Yep. God, I use whatever is put before you. You do it with all your heart. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I remember when these guys were getting of age, get jobs and stuff, you know, their very first thing, all three of them, the very first thing that they said to me was, I want a job that I can be full-time ministry and still work. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean full-time ministry where I'm, you know, nine to, five. nine to five in ministry. It means that this is my true job, is serving God. Yep. And this is what God has me do. Or putting God first. To supplement it. Right? To supplement it. Yeah. yeah, putting God first. Yeah. And so, you know, that's what God gave him. That's what God gave her. And that's what God gave her. And they're all different. But when we have outreaches, when we have church things, when we have they can easily go to those things and, and give to that. And, and really during the whole week, they're working towards, you know, the Sunday and the gaming party and the, yeah. And, you know, I never noticed that about David, but that time alone with God, that time he was building character with God, he was building that. And that time alone with God is what put him in that position to that's then be good. king. Yeah. If he wouldn't have built that yeah. with nobody seeing it, yeah. that's character. Yes. Character mm -hmm. is doing good when nobody knows it. Yeah. Is choosing to do what's right when yeah. nobody sees it. Yeah. When you don't get any recognition for it, when nobody cares, nobody knows, but he was building that all by himself with yeah. God. Him and God, he built that so strong that then when the pressure did come, he was ready for it. Yeah. yeah. One of the covenant names of God is the God who sees. Yeah. Whoa. He always sees. sees that. What if he would and have been sitting out there and been like, this is not fair. Why do I have to do this job? Yeah. What he became he great by serving. Yeah. When his dad sent him out yeah. to find out what his bro how it was going with his brothers in the army there with Goliath, they were all at a standstill. He sent him out there to bring food, you know, go see and then bring report back. His brothers were so mad that he was there. They yelled at him. They yeah. degraded him. He, he had to turn to somebody else and say, what's going on here? What's going on? And the minute he heard that, it just rose up in him. Is there not a cause? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes. Is there not a cause? And when he went to fight Goliath, he didn't fight Goliath to be prestigious, mm -hmm. to get seen, to get known. 
No, he said he was in covenant with oh, God right. and yes. no one was going to come against God's people. Yep. Okay. Yep. I mean, think about that. He was young. He was like, well, they predict, uh, they're saying that he's like 17. He was a young guy. And they didn't even say he was that good looking. Yeah. You know, and when he got out there, he didn't just, you know, have all of this equipment. He didn't know how to use any of that. He wasn't trained in war. No, mm -hmm. he didn't go out there with armor on. He didn't go out there with, with strength. He didn't go out there as any knowledge, mm -hmm. any of that, you know, of army. But he went out there and he stood in front of Goliath. Goliath just, you know how they stand there when you're, when you're going to be in a fight, boxing, they go face. I mean, face they're off. so yeah. close. It's embarrassing. They're mm -hmm. so close. And, you know, they're just looking at each other, just ugly and just, you know. And, and that's what they did. Goliath, they, they weren't that close. But Goliath starts telling what he's going to do to him. If you had a guy that was, you know, nine, ten feet tall, trained in war trained from his youth, from his youth, <laughs> and he's telling you what he's going to do to you, you better know who you are in Christ. That's right. Yeah. You better know who you are in God. You better know your covenant. Yeah. David yeah. was outraged. Yes. That the people of yep. God yep. were afraid and uh, being affected by enemy army, and yep. that that Philistine was cursing. God's people yep. and made them mad. Yeah. That should make us mad today. That should make us mad. That should make us mad that today. Make yeah. us and mad. we should all be ready yeah. <laughs> that we've had experience with. The Bible says that David, David said, God taught my hands to war. Yep. He didn't go to military school. No. But God showed him how to fight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He'll teach you how to fight. Wow. Yeah. He'll teach you how to win. And the one thing yeah. God said about David was, He is a man after my heart. Yeah. yeah. David was with that sheep and he was seeking God. And look at, he won because he was already in that place with That's God. Right. He That's put in, he, he invested that time yeah. with God. He yeah. invested that. You do that behind closed doors before yeah. you can like come out in public and be like, well, look who I am. No, you have that already established and invested. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. 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 So I like what John said. He was out there serving. Yeah. So Jesus gave the disciples an accurate descri oh, description. Here's the other success. thing I want to say about that too. Is when David was with the sheep, he didn't miss that appointment. Right. To be anointed as king. He didn't oh, miss wow. it. God went after him. <laughs> you will not wow. miss it. Yep. God will that find you. Yeah. Yeah. So, so since I was, you know, I've told this a million times, you know, I knew I was going to, my heart, I knew that I had heard from God when I was just little. I was mowing the lawn for a widow down the street. And I used to go over there and help her clean and stuff. And because my mother wouldn't let me do anything at our house. And I just, I don't know. So I heard from God that I was going to be a minister. I didn't know what that looked like, what it meant, nothing. But when I came to the point when I was going to be become a pastor and be ordained and stuff was when we left that church. That could have been, I could have seen that as the end of ministry, the end of ministry, when really it was the beginning. That was the beginning yeah. of everything that has been in my heart that God has told me all wow. these years. But I was like 40. That was a long time to wait. Yeah. And when it looks like it's impossible, it looks like it's the worst place, it looks like David was back with the sheep, and here the high priest is in there, uh, try, you know, seeking God. Is this the guy? Is this the brother? Is this the one? Is this the one? And he could have been back there forgotten, forgotten wow. and missed the opportunity. God will not allow that. Yep. You keep your heart towards God and he will bring you forth. Praise He'll God. put you up front Praise like God. that. Up front. Yeah. Yep. Years yeah. ago, you know, I'll just say years ago, we sat down, Brad was coming to our house, we sat down, and I wanted to go to Rama to be a, a pastor. And you had to have a pastor at that time send you, you don't have to anymore. And Brad said, no, I don't think that you should go, and then he turned to Tom. He said, what about you? Has God spoke to you? And Tom said, no. So I couldn't go. I couldn't go. And I mean, there were those things, one after another, after another, after another. Just the door would slam, the door would slam, the door. And I remember I came to a point with God. 
Uh, the service was over at one Sunday, and I left, and I cried all. I walked home. I didn't even tell my. I didn't even tell my husband or my kids. Like, I just left. And I walked home, and I said, "That's it. I'm done. I am so done. I am so done. I just let it go. I am. I don't care if this ever happens." I am finished. I am not going to be disappointed, frustrated, discouraged anymore. I, that was it. And you know what God said? You are right where I want you now. It's about time. Wow. And see, it was me. It wasn't him. It right. was me. But see, I didn't know. I didn't know. All I had to do was have complete, have my heart completely fixed. Yeah. I was still trying to make it happen. I was still trying to feel everything, and get the, you know, position, get the, yeah. And now, I don't need the position. It doesn't affect me a bit, not a bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, and even with David, after he killed Goliath, guess where he went? Back with the sheep. That's right. But then God added to him. Went back with the sheep. Yeah. Wow. But then God added wow. to him, Saul called him to come play music for him. And the demons would flee. But then guess where he went? Back to the sheep. Back to the sheep. So sometimes God will show you, this is what you're going to do. This is what you're going to be. But back to the sheep. Then when he did get to be in the, the palace or whatever, you know, with Saul, and he became uh, blood brothers with Jonathan, Saul's son, Saul was trying to kill him. Yep. Yep. He had to flee for his life. Saul was trying to kill him. He had persecution for doing what God put before him. And yeah. the success that he started getting in God yeah. it made Saul mad. He yeah, got yeah. jealous. He had to hide in a cave. And he could have killed Saul many times. But then you know what happened? 400 men and their families sought him out and said, We've come to serve you. Wow. We know yeah. your king. We've come to serve you. And then it came to a point where David could have legally have killed Saul, and he didn't do it. His men even told him, this is the time, this is God say him, this is the time, kill him. And it was, uh, David's like, I'm not taking this in my own hands. I'm not going to touch God's anointed. And that set him up then is, to be a good that king is later. The key. That is the key. That's the key. He not sowed so. into Man. his future. And wow. we come to those points all yeah. the time. We always, there's little all the tests time. all the time through life. Yeah. Yep. Every time. But he put in that work out in those fields by himself. He yeah. put in that foundation was established. Yeah. You know, I am so thankful that when I went to Brad and wanted to go to Rama, he said no. I am mm. so, I was not ready. I would have, uh, I would have messed that up. So thankful that it's taken this long. I'm so thankful. Now, I wouldn't have said that before, because I was so angry, yeah, and so disappointed, and so hurt, but man, I'm so thankful. I'm thankful for every single solitary thing I went through. And you know what, that's the training. You can't look down on the training and be like, well, I only want to play the games. I don't want any of the training. I heard there was this pastor and he was playing college basketball. And his coach said, I'm going to put you under so much pressure training now so that when you're in the game, that's not the most pressure you're going to be under. Oh. So, so he did. Wow. He was under so much pressure. So he was not the biggest guy. He was not the tallest guy. He was not the best player. But he was going to play center. I have no clue about basketball. But I guess center is a very important position. But he was like the fourth string. So if the three... If the center, he got hurt, and the backup to that got hurt, and the backup to that got hurt, then he would play. And he thought, Psh, I'm never going to play that. I'm just going to play all the other positions that I play. But they had him train like he was going to play the center. So he had to eat with the guys who would play center. So he would have to eat more than he would ever eat. He had to train like the guys who played center, which is training harder than all the other positions had to play. And then not get to play it. And he wow. thought, well, I'm never going to do this. So he'd be eating with them, and they'd be like, you have to finish that. He's like, I can't. You have to finish that. He's like, fine. So he got really fit and stuff. So then there came a day where he did get to play center. 
And he was ready for it. He was ready, he was ready for it. Wow. And he did really wow. well. Yeah, you know, but he put in the time and training. Wow. Andrew Walmack, he talks about, he knew, he heard from the Lord that he was supposed to have a worldwide ministry. And he could see examples of others. And he said, Lord, I'm ready for that now. And the Lord showed him an image of a tree planted in two inches of soil. Ooh. And he said, if I gave you this right now, the pressure would kill you. Yep. But if you'll allow me, I'll, I'll start that root system. And then you'll be able to support it. Well, if you look at him now, that's yeah. what, exactly what he has. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. God can't give us everything that he shows us right now. It kills yeah. us. Yeah. So I, you know, I just got something from uh, the Lord for us. Every single thing that you do is in preparation for the call of God in your so life. Good. Yes. Everything. So yes. Everything. When David was with those sheep, if he wouldn't have had a heart for God and everything to him counted because he was doing it for God, he would have missed out. He wouldn't have been ready, wouldn't have been ready. Everything, when you go to the littlest thing, when you go to the store and that checkout person's there and that person's crabby, maybe they're treating you like the worst, that is part of your training. Yep. Wow. When, you, when you get to, you know, I mean, every single solitary thing is training. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it that way, you're gonna, you're gonna look at it like, this is my lesson. This is my lesson. And the hardest thing, the most frustrating thing that you're going through right now is your biggest lesson. Yeah. Your biggest lesson. Wow. And it's preparing you for that next position. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're going to look back and you're going to go, oh my gosh, I wish I would have known that. Yeah. I probably would have did it better yeah. and wouldn't have had to go through it 20 more, 20 more times. Mm -hmm. I would have got it the first time. Yep. No wonder Paul said, I count it all joy. Mm -hmm. Because he knew that this is good for me. Yeah. This is making me stronger. Mm -hmm. This is, it's going to make me better. And I'm going to come through on top because I'm going to stick with God. And no matter what, I'm going to be undisturbed. And I'm going to come through this yeah. and come out mm -hmm. better and stronger and in a better position than I was before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every time that has happened in the Bible, if you look at that, you'll see how they went through the training and then the test came, yeah. and if they came out on top, if they beat that test, they came out even better than ever. Yeah. Job, a lot of people say, well, Job, he lost it all. It was the worst. Um, did you see how he came out after? Mm -hmm. After that whole thing, not saying that God did it to him, but that whole thing, after all that, he came out wealthier than ever. He had more kids. He had all this stuff. It, he came out so much better. He was one of the wealthiest men in the whole earth at that time. It always comes out better if you go through the training. Mm -hmm. We have to be rooted and grounded in love. Mm -hmm. And when we go through those trials, that's just the root. So yeah. Further and stronger and deeper. Like, yeah. It reminds <laughs> you of the story. Yeah. I'm yeah. going. I'm yeah. going. Yeah. It, and just think about that. I mean, just that example uh, is uh, w like with Brett. Look at now. He comes here and preaches. Yeah. We're doing his team thing. We're doing, what if I would have spoken out loud what I was thinking <laughs> when he said no? What if I would have done that? What if I would have given up right there? What if I would have said, okay, you know what? We're not having a Bible study at our house anymore. We're not going to sit here for five and a half years. And, you know, and when that ended, I thought everything ended. You know, and I just, oh my gosh. And then just think about that. Just think about we don't know the future, but everything that we're doing is setting us up. Yep. It's setting us up. It's setting us up. It's setting. Yep. So really, really, everything we're going through is to teach us. Yep. To teach us. And when we look at it that way, it's not the end of the world. It's right. not, you know, we don't have to get so involved in it ourselves. We just got to go, okay, Lord. Okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna trust you in this. I'm gonna learn the lesson. Help yeah. me learn the lesson. Yeah. Yeah. Help yes. me learn from this. And that's why God put pastors in the church yeah. to encourage and to stir up their people, show up for practice. Yep. Yes. Be here for practice. Yeah. Be here this day and this day. We have practice all these days. You yeah. need to be there to get that encouragement, to get that strengthening, yeah. to get that training. Yep. Yeah. The Bible says the trying of your faith 
yes. is more precious, precious than gold. That's testing that faith. Yep. And seeing how it's going to hold up in these situations. How's your faith going to hold up? Yeah. And he says, I don't want that test. Well, it's precious, more precious. Go through that. Yeah. You, you win that. Uh, so I was uh, ordained through Jim Casement Ministries, AFCM. And um, he, came to our, he came to our house. And this was huge. I mean, this is when he was full blown, you know, really, you know, huge. Yeah. And uh, so we rented the community building and uh, because we weren't going to be able to get everybody in our house, you know. And so we rented the community building and um, Brad brought him. And so we were doing the worship and I was, I was leading the worship then in this Bible study in my house. So I was to lead the worship. And... Uh, and so Brad called me up and he said, um, these are the songs I want you to do. And I was like, oh. And I had a choice to make right then. I was not able to choose the songs. I was told what songs we were supposed to do. That would be like, uh, you know, if you were going to do something and someone came in and said, this is, how, this is what you're going to say. This is how you're gonna do it, you know. Mm -hmm. And and man, I had it all of my flesh. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that was the best thing for me. Training, best wow. thing for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the best thing for me. Yeah. Then uh, Jim Caseman came, and he came to Victory in Life Church. I don't know if you remember that or not. Uh, this is when I was an associate pastor. And I wasn't a associate pastor at that time, but I led worship there. And we had a full band and stuff. And uh, I, guess what? I didn't have any, no showbiz in me. I wasn't doing it to you know, be recognized by him or anything. Why? Because I passed that test. Mm. So I didn't have anything to work, I didn't have any of that to work through. Like, oh, I'm the worship leader in Jim Case coming and I'm going to shine and I'm going to make this, you know, awesome so that I look awesome. Mm. I mean, come on. We all go through those, you know, things. Yep. And, and so I didn't have that. So we had the most amazing move of God. And, and, uh, and I, I, I wasn't used ever giving a word of prophecy or giving a, you know, mm. and all of a sudden the Lord just moved on me to give this word of prophecy, then a guy that came, a visitor came, who we know really well, he added to it. Then this other person wow. added wow. to that. This other person added to that. And Jim Caseman, when afterwards, he said, he says, you know what? This was just like we used to do it. It was wow. the most amazing thing. And it was all of the prophecies together answered what he had been seeking God for months and Yo. months to know. But wow. we didn't know that. Wow. We didn't know that. Wow. But see, I, if I wouldn't have been able to just give it over to God before, I would never have been used in that. Yeah. Wow. God doesn't use someone who's not humble. God doesn't no. use someone who's not surrendered, no. whose you know, heart is to show God mm. and is you know, putting him up there, putting him up there. But it's something that we have to learn and go through and learn and go through and learn and go through. And then from this angle and from this angle and this angle. And so it bypasses us so we can lay ourselves down and say, you know what? I got nothing. And God goes, good. good. Whew, good. It's about time. I'm waiting. Man, because whoo. Right? Yeah. And it's like what you do. It's almost like you move to the side and he comes along with you and your workers together. Yes. <clears throat> That's it's so the good. most amazing yep. thing. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot to work through to get to that place. And still, I mean, we never arrive till we get to heaven. <laughs> we still have this flesh, you know. Yeah. yeah. And I feel That's like amazing. right now we're in a season of training. Yeah. And this is like a behind closed doors, nobody, there's no audience, there's nobody watching that. This is just training time yeah. because things are going to be coming and if you're not trained in that if you're not established in that if you don't have that set now when the game does come when the test does come you're not going to be ready for it right? yeah yep. True. but if you do the training now you're going to come out of success yeah because you're going to fall back on your training and then it's just going to be easy yeah 
Yeah. And you're going to win every time? Remember what they used to do on TV? I don't know if they still do that because we don't have the regular channels where they would say, this is just a test. Oh, yeah. And it would go, eh, it was annoying a sound. They couldn't it's pick a, you know, like, a test. Uh, no, it's eh. Yeah. And you'd have to wait forever. As a kid, you would just be like, oh, my god, We get it. This is 10 yeah. years. Yeah, this is only a test. That's what we have to say. This is only a test. Yeah. Yep. This is just a test. That's so encouraging Light when inflation. you know it's a test. Yeah. Light inflation. When you know it's a test, I'm just going to learn this lesson. Yeah. I'm just going to learn, how do I learn this lesson? How do I respond, Lord God? How do I? Because we cannot yeah. do it ourselves. No. Yeah. And they even say, like, if you're working out consistently, and some of the workouts, they, they weren't easy. You're like, I don't know what was wrong with me. It just was really hard. You showed up and you did it anyway. See? You still gain from that. Just yeah. showing up, just doing the work. Just even if it's hard, just getting through it, you still did it. Yeah. There's still progress from that. Yeah. yeah. I you know that was one of the things that, and I've told Brad this many times too. I think I said it when he was here that Sunday. But that's one of the things that really has kept me hooked up with Brad is he has gone through a lot. Yeah. Also, you know, like everybody. And he has stayed humble. He's a he's been a regional director for Jim Case Ministries for years and years and years and years and years and years and years. I mean, he preaches in huge churches, preaches all over the place, travels all over the place. But you wouldn't know it. Yeah. You wouldn't know it. Doesn't bother him at all to come here. And he gives just as much as he would in a big, you know. And it's not, you know, he doesn't have to shine. He doesn't have to be the big, know everything and be, you know. Yeah. That's yeah. hard to find. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is hard to find. Yeah. Yeah. Keep yeah. the goal before you. Yeah. What you want to be when you're exercising. Keep yeah. that goal before you. You need to see yourself successful. You need yeah. to see yourself in the blessing. You need to see yourself laboring with God. Yeah. The right attitude. Having faith all the time. That's yes. who we are. Yes. That's who we are. Yeah. And it's an it's an exciting it end. Is we exciting. have the best days aren't behind us. Yes. Oh man, They're... it's it's ahead. Ooh. I mean, like one preacher said, your future is so bright you need sunglasses to look at. It. <laughs> man, God's got stuff in store. Got you gotta show up for practice. Yep. You gotta stay with. You got yeah. you, You're gonna get. You want to get everything that God has for you. You need to be ready with everything that God's putting before you. Have a good attitude. Make the yeah. best of it. Well, just when we were getting ready for the expo, radio expo. Oh, you know, all these just tempting, temptation, distraction thoughts came. Like, why are you even doing that? Because you're yeah. not getting paid. You're not getting any recognition. You're not. This isn't like making your church grow. This isn't. All those lies. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, just because you're telling me these lies, I'm putting more into it than I've ever put into it. I'm going to be happier. I'm going to be. Yeah. Yeah. And, and be, why? Because. That expo was training for us. Oh, yeah. That's good. We were yeah. learning. We had, we had, uh, it was an honor and a privilege for us to go there in the Lord yes. and be able to encourage others and minister to others and be, right? Yeah. 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 That time when you're out in the field and you're spending time with God, that time when you're behind closed doors and nobody sees you, that time when you're at the expo and you think you're getting nothing out of it, that's never wasted time. Yeah. Never. Yeah. That training, that putting in that time, that investing is never wasted time. Yeah. Yeah. God that's sees right. it, and it does add to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I remember just last year when we had uh, the blast, and we did the Christmas thing in here. We didn't have very many kids. And I thought, oh, man, why are we doing this? Well, you know, we had a dad get saved, and he went to heaven this year. Young man. And, oh my gosh. Uh, and man, I thought, oh man, I repented. I was like, dear Lord, I am so sorry. I said, we will, we'll do this, we'll do that. Until you tell us not to do it, we're doing it. And, and we're gonna, I'm gonna do it more joyful than ever. Yeah, with my heart. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. because the, the devil will constantly point out what's missing. What you know? What do you, what do you have the worst? What you do stupid? What you say stupid? Whatever. And and you just have to remember. You know what? The opposite is true. Because all he can do is lie. The opposite is true. 
Yeah, the Bible says everything's written down in what we do, and there's nothing that we do that's in, that's not important. Yeah. Not one thing. Every everything counts. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. And we can get through life. We can be content. We can be undisturbed. And we can get through it all. I mean, Praise you God. go put on that little gun vest on one of those little kids. And you're, you're like, oh, man, you're going to play so good. Look at you. Wow, that's amazing, you know. That counts. That counts. Yeah. yeah. Praise God. Yeah. And Praise it's an God. honor to do that. Yeah. It's an honor to have that opportunity to do that. Yeah. yeah. Praise God. Yep. Praise Sir God. God. Yeah. And we just have to encourage each other. And it says that we're supposed to continually encourage each other as the day approaches. Yeah. More and more encouragement. More and more. Yeah. yeah. We used to do that for Taya when we were at the YMCA. It was hard work and it was, it was hard to be discouraging, whatever. And and uh, and then the Lord said, you know what? You better start encouraging people. So I say, this is the most fun. Yeah. Praise God. Yes. This is such an honor. to. That's where it started. This is such an honor to do this. People are like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's exciting. It's exciting. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise yes. God. Well, God we will be back guys. Sunday morning Woo. right here. Love you. Love Bye. you guys.